Hello and welcome back to Thomas Talk, and we got a special episode for you today. For the first time in a long time, we're going to talk to someone outside of the show, and it's going to be our first interview ever in a sit-down environment. And who better to have our first interview with than someone who we paid a lot of attention to last week, World of Sodor has joined me for a one-on-one -on -one interview that you're going to see right away. And then after that, you will see the news. And that's going to be it for this episode. The conversation with World of Sodor took up so much time that I'm just devoting this entire episode to that because it is a very interesting discussion. Now, somewhere about halfway through the interview, my Skype recorder kind of went dead, I guess is the best way to put it. So you will kind of hear a change in the audio. Um, the audio you're hearing will be coming out of uh, my microphone, um, just picking up the speakers uh, from World of Sodor talking. I have enhanced the audio, so it's a bit better. Uh, but if you still can't understand what he's saying, I've gone through the tedious process of hand typing in the closed captions so that we can all understand what he's talking about. So all you have to do is turn on the closed captions and whatever he says will be there. It's that easy. So you can understand him no matter what. It's a great conversation. Let's jump straight into it. I am now joined by someone named Reese, who you may know online as World of Sodor. He is the one who kind of helped spread out this uh, Thomas Wood scandal that we talked briefly about last time, and I'm sure that if you're a member of the fan base, you know about it. So first of all, Reese, thank you for agreeing to come on this show today. No problem, it's an honor. Um, I guess, <laughs> first of all, uh, how did you get involved with this project and, uh, and the fake Thomas Wood thing? So basically, as people know, I do work at like one of the biggest toy stores, Toys R Us. And with Kudak, like, we've been good friends, like, we were, we're not being, we have, like, we're becoming good friends, like, talking a lot and talking about models and stuff. And then one day I was just at work, then I read these messages about how he wanted, like, to do this wood joke with Thomas. And he told me about the packaging, so he made the packaging on, like, I think it was Photoshop and then printed it out on adhesive paper and then stuck it on the old packaging and then he made, created this Thomas, like, edited a normal Thomas and stuff. I thought, okay, this sounds fun. I'll help you sell the joke. So then I did. I posted it on Twitter. I made, like, a convincing statement about how my manager said about all this stuff and pulled it out onto the table with other new stuff coming out. And then, yeah, it just it went viral around the fandom. It's in a good way, well, kind of in a good way and kind of in a bad way. The whole principle of this joke was because before there was an incident with me and the whole fandom and he was like, okay, Reese, I want to see who starts kissing up to you, basically, once you post something new. So I was like, uh, I was kind of like, okay, I want to see this too. So we did that and then it kind of just went from there. It turned messy, but... <laughs> yeah, I guess that's fair to say. <laughs> So, I mean, this is, this is probably one of your most recognized tweets, right? Is this the most popularity you've gotten, most reaction to something you posted? Yeah. I mean, every time I went on Twitter, I'd just see 20 plus notifications, 20 plus notifications. I'm not used to seeing that. I'm used to seeing like 10 <laughs> or 15, not like constantly 20. So if this was something new for you, how, how did you react to all this attention you were getting? I was just like, oh my god, this is this is crazy. Like I kept messaging Kurt Kudak and he was just like, lol, this is just so funny that everyone's falling for this. And that I can see that, you know, like people are starting to talk to you again because before people used to start hating on me, but now the people that were hating on me started talking to me and stuff. Then I even got um a message from some guy on Facebook about it and then I just see Sif posting about it and I thought, okay. This has got kind of serious. Yeah. <laughs> so I just want to make this clear. Kudak888 got you involved in this project. Yeah, he and brought me on board you... to sell the joke. Okay, and you helped distribute it. Yeah. So did you actually get your hands on the Thomas Wood product, or did he just send you pictures that you distributed? He just, he just tried to, he sent me pictures okay. of the model in, to try and make it like it was in an office. 
kind okay. of like with the lighting. If you look at the lighting, he's kind of trying to kind of make it like dull, warm lighting. Hmm. Because it looked like they could have been phone pictures, right? So you didn't you didn't actually take those pictures. They were sent to you, and you just distributed no. them. Yeah. So some people in the fan base, when they found out that this was fake, that you were just a part of this whole scheme, laughed it off, took it as a joke, said, ah, you guys just tricked the whole fan base, good on you. And other people went as far as leaving the fan base because they were so upset about this. What is your message, I guess, to those people who are upset over this? My message is, it was a joke. You don't need to take it too seriously and over-exaggerate about it because it's about time people realise show, kids shows nowadays, they're changing. Kids in the 21st century like different things like bright, colourful, epic stuff. For example, like the build has changed and I promise is changing. And like, I didn't really see people like leaving the fan base over Trackmaster 2 and the new adventures range. It's, it's just one piece of like wood with a base and wheels with paint missing. <laughs> it's nothing to like go leave a hole in her family so far. So, so I guess you're lucky because shortly after you, it was revealed that you, you and Kudak did this, uh, they, were really, they released the pictures of the real Thomas Wood and people were more angry about that than they were about, about what you did. So they, they got over it and they've kind of forgotten their anger for you, which is, I guess, good for you. Um, yeah. What is your reaction to the new Thomas Wood, the official stuff? They don't look great. I mean, they do look a bit, eh, but to, from my point, I'm not really that bothered because we've had all of the older wooden stuff, the older Trackmaster and all that. So it, I don't have to collect this new range, so therefore I can see it in the shop and be like, Oh, new range. I'm not really bothered because I've already got the old wooden stuff and I'll take along. It's not, I don't need to worry because it's not like I have to use it. So I guess now the question is, where do you go from here? Because I mean, now that this is all done, that it's out there, where do you and Kudak stand on this? What was uh, his reaction once it was revealed? I have no idea, like, I have no idea where we go from here because I told a group of friends in confidence about this and in this chat it was about what's said here stays here but someone clearly didn't understand that so they went and leaked it, a screenshot in fact which is even worse and one minute I'm out with friends, I come home, I go into it, I see all these notifications again and then I go on Kudak's profile see that he's blocked me and like he hasn't even spoken to me about it which is kind of like a rude move i don't really want to swear in this but um <laughs> yeah a rude move but it's like if you could talk to me about how you felt they need to block me because i don't understand then so you haven't heard one thing from kudak since it came out that you were um, affiliated in this nope not one word he's blocked me so i haven't bothered with him or his stuff because if he's gonna be like that i just stay today and get on with my stuff it's a shame because I've even bought one of his models to help with like a future project which is coming up. So every time I look at that, it's just kind of like, oh, it's the guy I fell out with over a wooden train. So I guess, I mean, you put a lot on the line um, for this joke, right? I think you were mm -hmm. a very credible source before, beforehand. You were pretty, um, I, I think you're pretty innocent. Uh, and now you've pretty much lost a whole lot of credibility. Um, yeah, and I mean, I've mean, had someone message me die. <laughs> yeah. Over this situation. So, so, so I mean, how do you recover from from that? Well, I kind of went to it. I just ditched my old account. I went to my getaway account, and then after a friend told, spoke to me about it and told me, oh, you should just make your account public and your work public and just move on. I did so, and since then, it's been quite cool where everyone's just being normal again. I haven't had any drama since then. It's kind of just like a fresh start, but not in a cringy way. <laughs> well, um, I certainly understand where you're coming from. I sympathize with you. Um, and I certainly hope all the best for you in the future. And um, thank you very much for coming on Thomas Talk today, Reese. It was a very big pleasure talking with you. You too. Thank you.
Thanks again to Reese for sitting down and talking with me for a period of time that was about double what I initially quoted you. So thank you for that and thank you for opening up to me and to the audience. Now, let's go to the news. A bit of news here that's quite big, I guess, for the Thomas fan base. We are getting a new series. And it's called Thomas and Friends Big World Big Adventures. Some people think this is a spin off series based on an article published a while ago on Kids Screen, but some very, very reputable sources that are very close to the production have confirmed that this is not a spin off series, that this will be the series from season 22 onwards. What is this new series? Well, they've completely reformatted the show. It's no longer just based on the island of Sodor. The show will now be about Thomas and Sir Topham Hatt traveling the world, learning about different cultures, and meeting new friends. I think that's one that we're just going to have to wait and see how it goes. Now, the big rebranding of the show may come down to the fact that Mattel isn't doing so well financially right now. They are going down in stock a lot, um, and that is a concern. I think they are facing a big issue with other children's TV shows out there. Paw Patrol, which is a Canadian production, has taken over the entire shelf space from Thomas and airwaves and everything just because of how popular it is. And Mattel is kind of starting to see that. They, they haven't really been keeping up to the demand that Paw Patrol has. So it, it'll be interesting to see if this rebranding of the show will actually work for them. I think one of the best ways for Mattel to actually get eyes back on Thomas again and children back on Thomas is to maybe amp up the quality of their toys a little bit. Um, to, to maybe what it was, you know, 15 years ago when I was a kid. Because the Paw Patrol toys are definitely at that level and uh, they're selling a lot faster. So maybe it's time to also match them again and make good toys. And some news on season 21 now. It's coming a bit sooner than we might expect. November will see the release of Christmas on Sodor. Several new episodes will be on that DVD featuring Diesel, Emily, Daisy, and we'll even see a returning character. Terrence is coming back to the show in an episode called Terrence Breaks the Ice, which I'm assuming is about Terrence going on ice and it breaks, especially according to the cover that we we see on the DVD. I think that might be a given. Anyways, it's very exciting that Terrence is coming back, although there are some modifications that Jamfield made to Terrence. Uh, for the first time ever, he has eyebrows, which was seen in toys and in magazines and other media, but not really in the show before. So Terrence now has eyebrows. There are also some other little differences to Terrence that make him look a little bit different than how we last saw him. And those are all on his wiki page in the trivia section. You can read all about what's changed between then and now. Now this is particularly exciting because this will also be Terrence's first speaking role since season five, which aired in the mid nineties. So long overdue, and it'll be great to see what Terrence has to say after over 20 years of being silent. Also, Journey Beyond Sodor was released digitally, so you can buy it now on iTunes and all the other digital download mediums. There are some clips on YouTube, too. I'm staying away till the official DVD release, as I always do. It's just a tradition of mine, um, and I'm looking forward to seeing it. The feedback sounds a lot more positive than what I was expecting, so that is uplifting for me to hear, and it makes me even more excited to see what everyone's going on about. And that'll about do it for this episode of Thomas Talk. Thank you so much for joining us. And I will be back sooner than I have these last few times because in just a few days' time, something annual is happening. The annual Thomas special is being released on DVD across North America. And you know what happens when the annual Thomas special gets released on DVD across North America. It's time for a trip to Walmart. And you know what happens when it's time for a trip to Walmart. It's time to bring a friend. That's coming up next time on Thomas Talk.